This video describes the graphing feature of a TI-84 and a TI-83 graphing calculator. If we want to graph a function like y equals 3x minus 10 over x minus 4, we want the calculator to be in function mode. So if I hit the mode key to check that, the FUNC is chosen, and so we're in the mode for this sort of function. The other modes deal with parametric functions, functions in polar coordinates, and sequences. To graph the function, I want to define the function in the y equals menu. Because division has a higher priority than subtraction, I need to be careful with this expression and use parentheses around the numerator, 3x minus 10, and also around the denominator. When you're in function mode, the variable key here, the x, t, theta, and n key will put an x on the screen. Uh, we'll enter an x onto the calculator, and so I can hit that to enter 3x, and then uh, the subtraction key minus 10. Closing the parenthesis and hitting the division key, I can then open a new parenthesis and type in x minus 4. And once we have this expression typed into the calculator, we can uh, hit the graph key and see what happens. And the graph, a nice graph, appears on the screen. A couple comments about this graph uh, to get a sense of what's going on here. Uh, if you go to the window, we can see that the calculator is displaying x values that run from negative 10 to 10 and y values that run from negative 10 to 10 by looking at the y, uh, sorry, the x minimum, the x maximum, the y minimum, and the y maximum. The other values here, the x scale, indicates how far apart the tick marks on the graph are, and so they're counting by ones. So going back to the graph screen, we can see that those tick marks represent counting by ones. So our particular function, it has a horizontal asymptote at 3 and a vertical asymptote at 4. To set up the window in that standard way, uh, the zoom option 6 will automatically adjust the window so that it runs from negative 10 to 10 for x and negative 10 to 10 for y. Let's take a look at the TI-83. It's a little bit different in an important way here. The TI-83, this is an older TI-83. It has an older operating system. And so something occurs with this calculator that we didn't see in the previous one. If I want to graph that same function, I can go to the Y equals menu and, and things work essentially the same way. Uh, 3x minus 10 close the parenthesis, divide it by x minus 4. We can see that the, the equation is going to go onto the next line, which is a little bit different, and I actually messed things up a little bit here. I want to insert another parenthesis there. So th that presentation is a little bit different than on the TI-84, but that's not the main issue. Uh, if we go to the graph screen, what happens here is that the calculator is trying to connect the dots. Essentially, to, to create a graph, the calculator, um, the calculator plugs a bunch of x values into the expression and figures out what the y value should be, and then it connects the lines between them. And because the function is undefined at 4, we get a, a problem here with this graph. It connects the dot. In, uh, it connects the dots in a way that it shouldn't. So it gives us a false line, and, and in some ways you can kind of think of that as representing the asymptote, but it's really just a mistake that the calculator is making. Adjusting the window does make that mistake go away. Uh, we, we can adjust the window in a way that will make that mistake go away. If I change the minimum value to negative 2, now, negative, uh, now positive 4 is right in the middle of the screen. And so the calculator chooses that uh, positive 4 as one of its x values and, and plugs it into the expression. And because the expression is undefined there, you know, the calculator 
sees the problem, uh, and, and so it doesn't graph the false line. If I choose zoom option uh, 6, the standard window, it will go back to uh, the negative 10 by 10, and we'll see that problem again. A, a different way for correcting that error and getting rid of that false line is by going to the mode menu and choosing the dot mode rather than the connected mode. Now if we create the graph, the vertical lines will look a little bit funny because it's not connecting the dots anymore. The calculator no longer connects the dots, but because it's not connecting dots, it, it no longer connects uh, the, the false dots, the, the dots that shouldn't be connected. So finally I want to look at a couple problems that can occur with graphing. Uh, a few common issues. If we go back to the y equals menu, one thing that can sometimes cause trouble is that a stat plot might be turned on. So these are statistical tools that plot pairs of x and y values and if the lists that have x and y values aren't arranged in the proper way, it can cause problems. So if, if a stat plot is turned on, and I just turned that on by hitting enter, uh, so the plot 1 is now activated, and we can see that because it's now shaded. The list that plot 1 is going to refer to, they aren't it, organized in, in the right way, and so if I try to graph it, it's going to give me a dim dimension mismatch error because the list that that stat plot is trying to read aren't matched correctly. So to correct the problem, if you see that error when you're trying to graph, I need to hit enter to get uh, back out of that uh, error screen, so I canceled the error by hitting enter. And then uh, if I go to the y equals menu, I can most simply I can just use the up arrow to get into the plot uh, area up there and then hit enter again to uh, make the plot you know unhighlighted uh, to turn off the stat plot and now the the graph works fine a syntax error error occurs when the calculator is trying to graph an expression that it can't make sense of for example if I enter the square root of a curly brace that doesn't make any sense and hitting the graph screen we see a syntax error come up. What is sometimes a little bit tricky is that that syntax error can be hidden in one of the lower expressions and it might be hard to figure it out. So if you see a syntax error, keep in mind that you want to look at, at those uh, lower expressions. It might be, there might be a problem hidden down there. Hitting clear will get rid of an expression from the y equals menu. What I mean by bad window is that you may try to graph something and it may just not appear at all. For example, if I take x squared plus 15 and try to graph that in a standard window, the negative 10 to 10 sort of standard window, we aren't going to see anything because x squared plus 15 is a parabola that opens upward and is raised 15 units above the, the x-axis. So we can adjust the window knowing what that function should look like, knowing a little bit about what that function should look like. We can adjust the, the, y, uh, sorry, the y maximum maybe uh, to 30. And then we can see at least part of a, a, a much better graph than we saw before. When you do adjust the window like that, it is sometimes nice to adjust the scale as well. Maybe we could count by fives instead of ones, so that the y-axis isn't quite as crowded. The table can be useful in exploring a function to try to figure out what values make sense. And, and so if I you know, plug in 0, I can see that the value is 15. If I plug in 3, I can see the value is 24. So I can get a sense of x, y positions that uh, make sense and, and that would maybe be useful in terms of setting the window. So at negative 4, the value of the function is up at, at 31. Um, and so setting the window up to 30, well, maybe we should actually, to get a slightly better graph, we could set it up to 50. So adjusting the window 
in, in a way can, can make a graph appear that might not otherwise be visible. In a similar way, if I wanted to graph the expression x minus 12 squared, the standard window, option 6, will show us a little piece of that graph, but not a very good piece. One of the things that you may have used, and uh, one zoom option that you may be familiar with, is zoom fit. And what this does, it takes the given x range, figures out the y values that apply to that x range, and then adjusts the window accordingly. And so zoom fit doesn't always give a very good picture because it will just choose the x values that are given, and if those aren't a very appropriate range, uh, you'll see some, some kind of crazy, like, odd-looking pictures. So uh, I would encourage you to kind of think about what a, an expression should look like. x minus 12 squared is a graph, a parabola that shifted 12 units to the right. And so we you know, can think through this and think, okay, well, what, what should my window look like? It should be shifted to the right. I want to see more of that right window. So maybe I could go from 0 to 20 uh, and then have a more standard negative 5 to 15 might be a good choice because it's a parabola so it's going to be above the x-axis a parabola that opens upward and so we get our graph I hope you enjoyed the video thanks